I'm going to need you to be prepared to tune in to Mommy with Melanin, the Black Mom's Perspective. Hey girl, listen, moms are everyone's person. Baby mama drama, we're talking school about old school versus new school parenting. Baby fever, how not to lose yourself when you have a baby. With me, Angie P. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Momming with Melanin, the Black Mom's Perspective, with me, your host, Angie P. Hey, y'all. Hey, girl. Hey. How are you? Hey, mamas. So, I want to do a brief check-in. How is everyone doing? We are at the end of the month. Although we have 11 months left, so don't beat yourself up if you haven't accomplished everything you set out as a resolution for the new year, okay? We have 11 months left. Uh, Also, just making sure you guys are setting time aside for self-care, just making sure we have a proper family and work-life balance going on. So yeah, just checking in. I need to know what's going on with you guys. Besides that, I do have to tell you guys about an awesome, awesome co-podcaster on the CWF network, and that is Sam Priest. And his podcast is Words Mean Things. So on Sam Priest's podcast, he discusses relationships and friendships, and he explains the importance of your words and how you use them. Um, And he's so dope. So besides podcasting, and his podcast is really fun. You got to listen to it. Uh, Besides podcasting, he is also a singer, right? Like he's not just a singer. He does a lot of things. But one of my favorite things he does is sing. Like not just sing. He sings. Like throw a shoe at him sing. Okay. It's like old school Otis Redden. And, you know, it's really good. Um, So Definitely check out Sam Priest. Words mean things on the CWF network when you get a chance. I promise you it will be a treat. We are digging into today's episode. So here is the question I posed for you. Is baby fever a real thing? Ha! Huh. Now you guys know I'm a nerd. I'm into the whole health science, all of that good stuff. Um, so I'm going to say yes. My answer is yes, baby fever is absolutely a real thing. Um, And why? Let's dig into it. So what is baby fever, right? You hear it a lot. You hear baby fever, um, you know, all these things where people are like ready. Oh my God, I think I want a baby. And they're smelling the babies, right? And they think they're ready for babies. So baby fever is an influx of your emotions that trigger our instincts to reproduce. Okay, that's that's how I'm going to break it down. Baby fever is that influx in emotion and you feel triggered like, oh my God, I see this baby. I am ready. Your ovaries are tingling. You're excited, right? Now, many believe that it's a natural um, effect and some people believe that it's a societal effect. Honestly, I'm going to say that it is a natural effect first. Um, And that's just baby fever. Now the societal effect comes in with the pressure of your surroundings to have children. So both men and women can experience baby fever. Uh, If you guys don't know, my husband actually had baby fever first. So we were married about two years. I was taking birth control initially. And then we were like, well, I'm not going to continue with the birth control. I hate how I feel. Um, You know, all of that stuff. And then we were just like, whatever, shoot up the club, have fun, all that great stuff. Just don't do it on these few days. And my calendar was pretty accurate. So I go and I sit with my new OB because I wanted to make sure I had um, a black OBGYN. So I go and I have this appointment with her and she's like, so you're not trying right now? I'm like, no, but we're like, if it happens, it happens at this point. I'm going to loosen the reins, you know? Um, So she's like, well, let me see how accurate your app is. Guys, this was December of 2018, okay? 
I remember. So I sat with her and I'm going through the dates and she's like, oh, so your, your app is actually pretty accurate. Let me get that app. So she wrote it down so she can refer it to her patients. And she's like, well, if you do want to get pregnant, you should be having sex on these days and all that good stuff. Um, and I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. So I do my normal, like, you know, pap and all that good stuff. Um, and I go about my business. So we're like, well, if it happens, it happens. We're just out here free balling, like, shoot up the club, all that stuff. Husband and wife, why not? That's my man, um, legally. (laughs) So it is what it is. And when I tell you, February, I was pregnant, completely pregnant. And we were like, what? So yeah, uh, anywho, homeboy had baby fever first. And that is how I ended up being like, okay, I'm going to give in because he was like, you know, I I don't think it's a bad idea to have a little baby around or, you know, he would look at other babies. Oh, they're so cute. And then people that got married, like around the time we got married, were already having babies and some working on their second one and the pressure of folk and family. So especially with my husband being the only boy, his mom has two children, a boy and a girl. And she's like, well, you know, I am ready for grandchildren. Anywho, as I said, he had baby fever first. Um, Both men and women can experience baby fever. As I said, holding a baby, seeing baby clothes, the smell of a baby, just so many experiences can trigger that emotion that causes baby fever. So baby fever is real, you know, We can always go into like your your dopamine and serotonin and all that good stuff. But baby fever is a real thing. The same way when we smell certain scents, we get like certain emotions. So the same goes for baby fever. People look, they smell a baby. And especially women, we get these little tingles in our ovaries, right? So I also ask, because now we know what baby fever really is, um, we have to differentiate, right? Baby fever versus the pressure of our surroundings. So are you being pressured by society to have children? Hmm. That's something that we as women have to constantly ask ourselves when we do experience baby fever. You know, do I really want a child or is it the pressure? Um, is it my age? Is it, you know, my physical well-being or my body, my health status? Uh, it's so many questions that will pop up when you have that baby fever, right? And and for some, that's a clock, a time. Society has like this cruel way of pressuring women to have children before a certain age. And I'm grateful that women are now kind of pushing past that roadblock of, oh my God, before 30, before 35, I have to have children. Um, because it's not necessarily true. If you're 40 and you're healthy and you now feel ready to have children, then you have your children. Uh, people were having children at 13 and 14 and 19, 20 because they were only living until 35. Medically, they were not advanced. So it's very different. Um, don't let people pressure you into having children. Family and friends even offer their two cents, y'all. Like, they love to offer their two cents on your body. As I said, my mother-in-law is like, oh, well, I'm ready to be a grandma. You know, people, oh, you've been married how long? And no babies? And I, at first, it was just like, oh, okay, you know, it's cool. People, you know, are, well, okay, she's married. They're married. When are they going to have children? But I didn't realize until um, we were ready to have children and I was fearful of the pressure people really put on you because when that question arises of, oh, when are you going to have a baby? You don't know what someone is going through. You don't know if they're barren. You don't know if they're having issues conceiving. You don't know if they're an IVF. So we have to be very considerate when asking people when they're going to have children. And not just that, because I know some nasty rude people, even if you can't conceive or you're having issues or whatever, Be mindful of how you treat pregnant women as well and what you say to them Um, because people, no class, no class. I've had people say nasty stuff to me pregnant as well. So as I said, that pressure that is put on you from your family and friends to have children, um, it's weird. It's overwhelming. So we have to learn to set healthy boundaries so they're not stressing us out about when to have children. That's it. it. I literally feel like it goes from... When are you going to get married? You guys have been dating for like five years. 
When are you going to have children? You guys have been married for like five years. When are you going to have a, a another baby and give that toddler, that five-year-old another sibling? Ma'am, sir, my uterus does not need a security guard. Thank you very much. People do the most and then some sometimes. So we have to be mindful to just set up those clear boundaries. And if that means dismissing a person, if that means cutting that person off or checking them, because I'm saved, but sometimes you might get a little cuss word or two if you push me. So, you know, set up those clear boundaries. But yeah, so, sometimes just walk away too because I, I, I fight y'all. But pray for me. We working on it. We as women are often pressured by society uh, to have children along with the pressure from, you know, our immediate family, our friends. And sometimes women feel pressured from their spouse. Now, I'm grateful I don't have that issue. Me and my spouse communicate. So decisions are made, you know, kind of it flows. But I've read so many blogs, so many stories, so many articles of women that are like, oh, well, my husband is ready for a child. I'm not ready. I feel like he's pressuring me and, you know, and all that going on. And I feel like if you are in that situation, remember, communicate. That's it. What, what's going to happen? Okay, my husband's going to be mad. He wants a baby right now. I'm not ready. You're not saying anything. So that's making it worse. Set time aside. Clearly communicate. I know, honey, you want a baby now. I'm not ready. Give me one more year, two more years, what have you. And and it's okay. You know, if you guys can compromise, do that. Um, so you shouldn't be pressured because it is not good to even try to conceive or, you know, even going through pregnancy, your physical body. You don't want that pressure. You don't want to be overwhelmed. You should be enjoying the process. I remember enjoying, besides that very first pregnancy test I took where I froze on my couch, I remember enjoying the entire process of pregnancy from the beginning to the end, knowing I was pregnant, finding out I was pregnant, sharing everything with my husband, every appointment we went to. It was just bliss. So when you're not pressured, you have that. So make sure if you're feeling pressured, you can discuss that with your partner and work that out. But don't nobody want to bring a baby into a world that is stressful under stress. That is bogus. This is a stressful world. This is an overwhelming world. And we're black in America. You're going to be stressed out bringing them in. No, we can't do that. That's ridiculous. Um, so yeah, set clear boundaries, communicate and make sure you're not pressured. This is your uterus. You have control. Your uterus doesn't come with a security guard. Your uterus doesn't come with a time clock. You handle your uterus, okay? We are owners of our own uterus. I'm going to stop saying uterus now. So, <laughs> lastly, can you actually get rid of baby fever? Hmm. I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to say yes because I, my daughter's too, and I look at other babies and I'm like, oh my God, I remember when she was that small. Now she's flipping over my couches and like turning my house upside down and fighting my couch pillows. But I, I also remember that I had no sleep. And then it goes away for a minute. And I'm like, okay, we, we can wait. We can wait until she's, you know, a little more independent. And she's a very independent two-year-old. But I mean like independent where you can help me. Like I can, you can eat, you can kind of clean your space. You can, you know, a little, little more helpful because yeah, that's a bit much. Um, and I don't want two car seats in my car, y'all. Like I, I don't want my Jeep to have two car seats. That's just not cute. I'm, I'm not a two car seat person. It's already stressful dealing with the car seat. Like sis knows I open the car door, put her in getting your seat because my back is not, yeah, we can't do all this. I can't do two. When she's in a full booster seat and, you know, then we can consider another car seat. <laughs> um, but can you get rid of baby fever? Absolutely. Uh, baby fever is a real thing. It's a real emotion. You know, men and women experience it. And sometimes with baby fever, we forget the actual work that needs to be put in to care for this child. So I say, remember the responsibility. As I said, when I consider all oh, these cute babies, I'm ready. I remember I had no damn sleep. And then I'm like, okay, chill out, body relax. We're going to wait a while because I'm, I'm not ready to manage a toddler at two and a brand new baby. That That's not going to work. So 
remember your responsibility. You want to assess your support circle, okay? Because another reason, as I said, I have a two-year-old and I have friends that, you know, we've had our first child at the same time and they're on number two. And I'm like, well, I don't have that kind of support. My husband doesn't have that kind of support. You know, we can't do it without spending excessive amount of money because we don't have the family, you know, where we live now to be like, Hey, you watch the baby, you do that. It it just, it can't happen. Um, so assess your support circle. If you do have that support and it is a good time, then okay. But if not, eh, you want to reconsider because that's going to take that baby fever emotion right away. Um, lastly, I would say, uh, assess how things will go if you do have the baby. Because as I said, our situation right now, um, and probably ongoing, you know, we don't have a lot of family. So when I tell you guys, we don't have support, um, you know, my daughter has her grandma on my side and her dad's mom. Um, she has one grandpa, but they're in Oregon, like they're on the West coast. We're on the East coast. You know, my mom is in another state. So it's, it's just not, you know, it, it's just not a great situation um, where we have that support circle where, you know, some of my friends that have children, they live at home with their parents. So you have that whole household dynamic of help. Um, and on top of us having family kind of spread about, we also both work regular day jobs. We also are trying to build businesses. I'm podcasting. I'm, you know, it's, it's so much. So all of these things have to be brought into consideration when you think about having a baby. So you want to think what will go on if you do have this baby? How will things be if I do have this baby? And guess what? If that doesn't work, honey, look up the cost of childcare. <laughs> Look up the cost of diapers. Look up the cost of a car seat, a stroller, uh, 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 clothing, okay? And all the expensive things that you need. And that will cause you to reconsider. I promise you, that baby fever will go away. Calculate. Sit and calculate. Okay, I, I thank God I had the luxury to be home over a year with my daughter. She didn't start uh, childcare until... A year and a half, a little over a year and a half. Um, And then we were like, okay, you know, it's time for her to have some better social skills and stuff like that. Um, So she started and she, you know, her school is amazing. They do a lot of Montessori inspired learning and just so many things. So it worked for us. um, But childcare is very expensive. And I, you know, I don't know. I don't want to invest too much in child care, but I'm also okay with uh, investing a decent amount in child care because I know my kid is getting foundation. You know, at the end of the day, I'm not trying to spend, you know, tuition that you would spend at Harvard for, you know, Head Start or, you know, early learning. Um, but if I have to spend a decent amount and my child is learning and, you know, growing and doing all the things that she should be doing, then I'm going to, I'll, I'll bite the bullet and pay the extra. Um, and as I said, with my daughter's school, I love her school. She's two. She knows how to spell her name. Um, she knows all her colors, her shapes. She knows how to count in Spanish and English. Uh, she knows her sign language. I do that with her at home. Um, you know, it's just so many things that we do at home as well as school. Like I was so excited the other week because my daughter mastered the Montessori coat flip. Okay. Now that I did not teach her. I, I didn't have time. Like I didn't teach her that at home and she learned it at school and I'm like, okay, this is awesome. I see where my money is going. We're doing great. This is amazing. But anyway, I'm on a rant. As I said, you can look up the cost of childcare and those are things that may have you reconsider. Simply noting the cost of things for a year for a child, when you write those numbers down and you, you know, like my husband, we're we're big on numbers when it comes to like money and finance and stuff. When you write those numbers down and you're looking like it, then maybe you'll reconsider. Um, And guess what? If all fails, get a puppy child. Get a puppy first. Once you realize you have to potty train or, you know, dog train and and all this stuff, that amount of work, baby fever will be gone. 
get a puppy first. So I want to know, you guys have to let me know, seriously, have you had baby fever or have you had your uterus watched by family, like literally clocked your uterus? Please let me know. And how did you deal with that? So leave me a voicemail, 347-719-3350. And remember, just because the content stops does not mean the conversation has to. Follow the CWF Network on Instagram at CWFP. And while you're at it, follow me at momming, M-O-M-I-N-G, with melanin. And I look forward to talking with you guys again soon. And remember... Give yourself grace. Momming is a marathon and not a race. And don't let nobody watch your uterus. This is the CWF Network where we bring you big content in small pieces. Follow us on Instagram at CWFP underscore. Okay, bye.